Today I'm going to show you how to make your very own drum lampshade at home. This particular one is a 30 centimetre wide shade and can be used for a table lamp or for a ceiling rose. Follow along with the instructions to make your very own and if you do want to purchase any of the tools or the materials you can find all of the details in the description of this video. Starting off with this pretty fabric I've chosen a pink stripe. As you can see it does need a bit of ironing it is important when you start making a lampshade that the fabric that you're going to be using is lovely and flat. So I do recommend giving it a good iron before you get started. Now that we have the fabric ironed, we're going to be adding the backing of the lampshade to the fabric. And this is what gives it its rigidity when making a drum lampshade. They come in whichever size that you choose. This one is specifically designed for a 30 centimetre drum lampshade. So as you can see on one side it's white and that's the inside of the lampshade and then on the other side we've got this um, covering which peels off and beneath leaves a sticky side which attaches to the fabric itself. This particular fabric doesn't really have a pattern other than a stripe so the most important thing for me when I'm attaching this is that I get the stripes nice and even um, but you may want to think about the pattern that you're choosing and exactly where you might want to sit it within the lampshade when it's finished. So starting over here, I'm going to line it up on one of the stripes. So just where I've taken the backing off, I'm going to use my hand just to start sticking it to the fabric. And then slowly removing the underside and moving my hand along so that all of it then sticks to the fabric itself. If you look very carefully, you will see two score lines top and bottom and those lines there are designed to be removed so that the fabric itself wraps around the frame of the lampshade but we do need to make sure that we know how large that is before we actually remove that so we're just going to grab a pencil and draw a line all the way around the lampshade frame itself now i do advise using a pencil rather than a pen because a pen can leak or mark or spread whereas a pencil you can do very delicately so we're just going to draw around the entire shape very gently one end of the lampshade is going to overlap the other so what we do want to do is make sure that that gives us a really lovely neat edge. So choose one side, doesn't really matter which, but you may find that with a pattern placement it does. And we're going to leave a gap of about the same of the distance of the scoring around the long edge of the frame itself. So about a centimetre to a centimetre and a half, draw a line along. But we also want to make sure that when we finish our lampshade that everything tucks in really nicely. So we're going to leave two little tails on each side. So as you can see, I've drawn a line a little bit further away from the edge and then I've added these two little tails either side. Now we need to remove these two long strips from round the side. So just very carefully bending the fabric, but without making any marks to the actual inside area. I'm just going to remove the two strips. So you'll be left with two strips that look a bit like this. Now we can throw one of them away, but it is important that we do keep one of them because it does come in handy a little bit later. Grab some good scissors and then we're going to cut around the pencil line, making sure that you do cut around the pencil line and not the shape of the white plastic that's on the fabric. Now you can remove the plastic strips after you cut, but I do find when I do that, it does make the fabric fray a little bit. So I prefer to mark it and then cut it. We're then going to be left with something that looks a bit like this. So as you can see, I cut up to the edge on that side, but I left a little bit of extra fabric plus the two little tails on the top and the bottom. So we're just going to put that to one side and now we're going to get the rings and get those covered. For a standard 30 centimetre lampshade, 
you're going to need two rings, a top ring and a bottom ring. Now it depends whether or not you're going to be using this as a ceiling light or for a table lamp. If you were going to be using it for a table lamp, then this would become your bottom so that the light bulb can sit here. If you're going to be using it for a ceiling light, then this would become the top because you would want the light bulb to hang down from there. If you're using a fabric that has no pattern or a pattern that doesn't matter which way up it goes, like a stripe, then it doesn't really matter which way up it goes. But if you do have a pattern with a picture, do make sure that you make the decision now which way up you'd like it to go. In order to stick it to the fabric, we need to cover it in a tape. This is the tape, it's a double-sided sticky tape. Now you can use any double-sided sticky tape, but it is recommended that you use this one because this one is actually made of a plastic. If you use a paper one, it can become quite brittle and lose its stickiness over time, whereas this one works really well for lampshades. And as I said, you can see that in the description with a link where to buy this from. So what we're going to do is take our lampshade and along the outside of the lampshade, we're going to run the tape all the way round. Until we get to here and then I should just snip it off there and then going round and just pinching it all the way round the frame itself so that it covers as much of the frame as possible. And then when we get back to the beginning, take off the red strip and pull it off and then you're just left with your first ring covered in double-sided sticky tape all the way around the ring. I like to start with this one first because whilst I'm waiting to do the other one, I can lay it down facing upwards so it doesn't get stuck to the table. Then we need to do the other one. Exactly the same, taking the tape and running it all the way around the outside until we get back to the beginning again. And then just snipping it off at the end there and then wrapping it all the way round. Now is the time to attach the rings to the lampshade themselves. First of all, we want to get rid of this little bit over here, the bit with the two tails. So using our double-sided sticky tape, I'm going to run it along the edge of the plastic itself. So it will look something like that. So it's not on the fabric, it's on the plastic. Taking off the backing of the tape, and then just folding the edge over. That just means that when you finish your lampshade, you won't just see the edge of the plastic, but you'll actually see the edge of the fabric and it does give it a much nicer finish. We're then going to attach a different tape on top of that. So this tape is called a soft furnishings tape. It's a really lovely tape. It's a double-sided sticky tape, but it has a webbing inside it and it makes it a little bit stronger and helps the fabric stick together. It's used particularly when trying to join fabrics together, especially if we want to keep it permanent. So over the top of where we have folded the fabric, we want to come in by about five millimetres. We don't want anything oozing out of the side because it is glue. We don't want anything oozing out, but we do want to make sure it's nice and close to the edge. We're going to leave that on for now. So don't take the other side off of that just yet. But as you can see, it's just on the edge, but not quite. So facing that away from you and starting with the very clean edge alongside the plastic area here. So I've got my two rings and they're covered in double-sided sticky tape. And this is the fun bit where we need to roll it up and turn it into an actual lampshade. So again, this is the time to decide which way is up and which way is down. Because I've chosen a stripe, it doesn't really matter. You'll see that this particular one has three spokes on it. It is nice to start it halfway through spokes. It does mean that when we get to the join, that you won't end up finishing the join where a spoke is, because that can make it a little bit complicated to wrap it round. So starting at this edge, starting halfway, 
and also ensuring that whichever way up your lampshade is going to go that the grommet here sits on the inside because I have made lampshades before where I've made it and turned it out and realised that actually it's the wrong way around. So do ensure that whichever way you have it up that you've got that pointing towards the inside. Now we're going to be running this alongside the plastic itself. So put it right on the edge of the plastic but not on the fabric. Get both of them started and stuck and then slowly we're going to roll the whole thing up. So following it down and checking both sides and you can pull it towards you and if you feel that it's becoming a bit off centre you can unpeel it a tiny little bit and just go backwards. Just be very mindful that if you cause any creases to the plastic then there is no way of getting those out. So we just keep on rolling and keep on rolling and before you know it you will have the shape of your lampshade. So before we take the sticky off at the other end do roll it all the way to the end just to make sure that it does fit and no adjustments need to be made because once we take that final bit of sticky off there's no way of going back from that. So it all fits and it all looks great so we're just going to fold it back out being really careful not to damage the plastic underneath and now we're going to take off the backing of the double-sided sticky tape or the double-sided soft furnishings tape on the end and don't forget this particular tape doesn't come with your drum lampshade pack so you will need to purchase this separately and again I have linked that if you wanted to go and purchase it. I have found from making hundreds of lampshades that this is the best way to finish the seams. The only thing is is it's not 100% and it can loosen a little bit so I do advise that we add a little bit of super glue just in little dots all the way along the edge just to really really secure it into place. So we don't want lots, we literally just want a little dobs all the way along just to give it something extra to adhere to because as you saw when we started the lampshade was flat and we've now made it into a circular shape and the actual lampshade itself if not securely fastened will want to ping back open again. So to give a professional finish we just want to make sure that we cover every eventuality so that we're not going to end up with a misshapen lampshade. So then very carefully just closing up that seam there. So as you can see where we finish the seam is halfway between the two spokes which just means that when we go to tuck the sides in we're not going to have the spokes in the way. So that is now our lampshade. So slowly going around just use your hands and just fold over the sides of the lampshade. You'll feel it start to stick and what we then need to do is turn the sides in. So you'll see there that all of the sides are now folded in. Now there are a number of different ways that you can tuck the sides in. This is what comes with your kit. I'm not a huge fan of this but other people love it and I tend to use one of these. It's just something that I found in my workshop and it's a a hem measurer but I know that other people use butter knives as well the only thing I did find about using a butter knife is that it did mark the frame a little bit and that was a bit disappointing for me so just starting with whichever implement of choice just very carefully work your way round and then tuck it in another way to get started is to run a fingernail and just really tuck everything in so that you've got it started so that when you come along to start pushing it underneath the rings itself it's already got a bit of a helping hand to put it in there. Now as you'll see when we get to there we've got a bit of a tail. Now it's up to you to decide how much to cut off and it might be something that you need to practice how much to cut off but because that area is a bit lumpy, if we cut it completely straight, like all of the rest, then you'll find that it won't wrap over. So you don't need too much to wrap over, but you do need a bit more than the sort of centimetre that goes all the way around the sides. So as we go round, you'll hear a funny little clicking noise as you push it in behind the sticky back, behind the double-sided sticky tape. And that's a nice noise because you know that it's sort of working. Just be very mindful as you do go round the frame that you're not scratching the actual white frame itself because as I said there's not a huge amount of coming back from that. If we bend it or mark it 
then it's kind of there to stay. And if we're looking for the professional finish, we want to make sure that we keep this as perfect as possible. Now you can find that where that join is, that you never quite manage to get it in. Now that does depend on the fabric that you've chosen um, and many other factors as well. So we can come back to that with a little tiny bit of super glue later as well. And that's not a problem. It's not something that you'll see and it does mean that that then doesn't become undone at a later stage. So we're just slowly but surely working our way round. You may find that you need to put the lampshade into different positions to be able to sort of access it, but just very gently pushing in the edges and looking at it, making sure that all the little bits have tucked in. So as you can see, the inside there shows that all of the edges have been done on this side here. I just need to move on to the other side. So I'm just going to trim down my tail just a little bit, just enough so that I can tuck it in, but it's certainly not going to be too much fabric, but I'm not going to be able to get in the way. So this side, you'll have the three spokes. So we just need to take our scissors and just trim it just to the edge so that we have... Um, so that we're able to tuck it in around the spokes itself. Sometimes you can get a little bit of fraying where we've done that. So we just want to trim those off and just make those nice and tidy. So we're just going to go around the edge now and just trim off any excess little bits of thread around the edge. Tucking in as many we, as we can. Um, and then that is our finished lampshade. And you'll see that we've tucked everything in all the way around the edge. But inside, there is a seam, which you'll see here. And that's quite nice to seal this up really, really well. So if you remember, we had this white plastic left over from when we took that off the edge of the frame. So we're now going to run it down the inside, just taking a measure from it at the moment and just trimming the edge off. So I now know how long I need it to be. And I'm just going to take a tiny little bit of super glue. Again, not too much. It's about holding it in place rather than because it has actually already got glue of its own on there. There. Like that. And carefully picking it up and just running it along tucking it in the top running it along and then tucking it in the bottom there it just means that that seam itself is really really held together and isn't going to pop open so just trimming off any last little bits so there we go you can see there the seam is just finished off really nicely we're then going to take this here which um, is where the light bulb fits into and just clip it into the top just fits in there nicely. So there we have it, one lampshade that we can either use for a table lamp or for a ceiling lamp. It's entirely your choice.